Okay, let's begin. Uh, welcome to today's presentation. I'm Hao Li Zhang from Han. Uh, today, my colleague Wei Yanqing and I will deliver a presentation on virtual networking solution for ARM64. This is today's agenda. Uh, firstly, I will give some background information about this presentation. Then I will talk about the virtual network from the software side. Um, I will introduce three uh, virtual network scenarios. And then my colleague will introduce the virtual network from the ARM hardware side, include the ARM Newverse overview, which is as ARM CPU and subsystem and the data transport and the notification on ARM hardware. Okay, let's begin. So first I want to talk about is the front end and the back end. As you can see in this image, the large can you see mouse? Yeah. Okay. The large box is a host while the small bo box is a guest. And front end mean, uh, means that the virtual device inside the guest. And the back end device means the virtual device outside of the guest, uh, on the host. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, there are many components in virtual networking. And today, we will focus on two things. The first one is data transport the data exchange between the backend and the frontend while shared memory or other method. And the, uh, another one is notification, uh, single notification for synchronizing. synchronizing. So in some say, simple terms, uh, it means how we ensure the frontend device is aware that a um, network packet has arrived and can retrieve it from the shared memory, or how we notify the backend that we are, uh, there are networking packets waiting to be sent. Uh, I'm sure many of you are network ex networking experts who are already familiar with what I O. However, uh, for those who might not be as familiar. I I would like to provide a brief introduction on what I O. So the first one is what I O device. What I O is a standardized interface that provides virtual mach machine with access to simplified virtual device, such as block, storage, network interface, and consoles. Using what I/O in a guest VM enhances performance compared compared to traditional in emulated devices. This improve is due to what I/O device require minimal setup and configuration for data transmission, while host machine managing the majority of the setup and the maintenance of physical hardware. And uh, what I/O de device consists of. Uh, device status field, uh, filter bits, notifications, device configuration space, and the queues. And so it comes to work queue. Data transmission between front end and back end uh, occurs through shared memory using specialized data structure known as work queue. This vote queues function as a ring buffers of buffer descriptors similar to those used in network device. Okay, that's all the background information. So we can start to introduce the virtual network solutions. Uh, the first one is what I own net. 
So uh, the robot IO net use robot Q to do data transport. Uh, it is a shared memory between host user space and the guest handle space. Uh, so uh, when a network package uh, comes into the tab de uh, device, as you can see here, and then it needs to copy the data to the host user space, and then the vert IO net device will put it into the into the vert queue, and then after that. But I want that driver inside the gas can receive the 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 network packet. This is how data transport. And the next one is uh, notification. So there are two way uh, of notification, front end to back end, uh, which means uh, the from the guest to the host. The host. And another way is from the back end to front end means uh, from the what I own that device into the guest what net what I own that driver. So for the front end to back end from the guest to host, um, uh, when creating a what I own that driver, this device <coughs> in the guest. QMU register an uh, I.O. event FD for each device memory mapped I.O. MMIO in short. MMIO is a range of guest memory managed by host call, uh, callbacks. Each read and write operation in the, this memory triggers a corresponding callback on the host. So in the context of uh, what I own that when guests send a packet, the what I own that driver assess specific MMIO address. This will trigger a virtual machine exit. 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 And the, the, the exit is ha handled by KVM module in the host kernel, which then notifies the user space QMU by write into the I.O. event FD, right, the I.O. event FD. And the QMU have a main loop, which is keep, run, keep running. It will detect uh, this event FD is being written, and uh, it will no notify the what I.O. net device to retrieve network packet from the uh, bot queue. And then transmit it into the tap device interface. Okay, this is a notification process from front end to back end. The, the notification process from the back end to front end is different. Uh, when a packet arrives arrive to the tap device, the tap device uh, the corresponding tab device file descriptor, descriptor become readable. The QMU main loop receive an event and invoke a callback function to handle the packet. The what I O net device will fill those network packets into the vert queue. And <coughs> and finally the vert net device use KVMIOCTL to inject and interrupt to the KVM module, and the KVM module will inject this interrupt into the guest, uh, notify the front end driver to receive the packet. Okay. This is the notification process for what IO net devices. So for the main host net device, it also uses VertQ to exchange the uh, network package. Uh, however, the shared memory is different from that on VertIO net. 
The shared memory is between guest kernel and host kernel. Uh, as you can see, when a uh, packet comes into the tab, tab interface, the packet can uh, copy direct from the host kernel into the guest kernel via the vote queue. We don't need to copy it to the guest user space. <coughs> and in terms of the notification, we also have two directions, front end to back end and back end to front end. The front end to back end are similar to uh, to the notification with invoke IO net. So Cumul create a IO event FD for guest hardware MMIO region and the guest put the packet into the queue and the right to the MMIO region and the trigger on virtual machine exit and the KVM module will handle the exit. KVM module would write an IO event FD. And the warehouse net have a independent process that keep running, which is keep profile pulling the event FD. When the process says the event, event FD is written, the warehouse net device will receive the packet from the vault queue and uh, then transmit the packet into the packet interface. And uh, from the back end to front end, warehouse net to vault IO net, this is different with that on the vault IO net scenario. The QMU allocate an uh, IRQ FD and register it with both KVM module and the warehouse net. So when a packet arrive, the warehouse net into the packet into the vault queue and write the IRQ FD. KVM module would pull the IRQ FD. When, say, when the KVM module says the IRQ FD is, uh, is written, uh, it will trigger an interrupt to the guest. And the guest driver receive the notification and then it will retrieve the packet from the vault queue. Okay, that is all about the way host net. And last one uh, is SRIOV and WFIO or device pass-through. Uh, to make SRIOV VFIO works, it needs hardware support. My colleague will give a detailed introduction on the, this later. And uh, here I only give a brief introduction from software side. VFIO would map the DMA, DMA direct memory assist memory region to the guest memory space. Thus, uh, network packets can transmit directly between hardware device, hardware device and the guest kernel space. And in terms of notification, um, when sending packet from the guest VM to the hardware device, the device driver uh, in the guest would, would directly notify the network hardware device. And when receiving packet from network device and uh, want to trans, uh, transfer it to the kernel, uh, gas kernel space, uh, the hardware interrupt would be managed by general interrupt controller, it's a hardware, um, and the guest kernel would receive, receive the interrupt notification from the general interrupt controller. Okay, that is all from my side. Uh, welcome my colleague to give introduction on the hardware, hardware part. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, Howling just uh, introduced the main uh, Major some major software solution. 
of the virtual network on server uh, uh, as, a, as a we know. Nowadays, ARM servers have become an essential part uh, of the data center and the public, public uh, crowds. Therefore, it is useful for us to understand uh, uh, how virtual network uh, perform uh, operate on them and uh, what, uh, how the hardware impact the performance. Of. Uh, so let's start uh, with the ARM Neoverse product. Uh, Neoverse is uh, um, a 64 bit uh, CPU for data center server and uh, cloud computing. Uh, it has three series. The V series has the highest uh, single core performance, and the N series uh, is more balanced and it's also scalability. Um, and the E series uh, has the lowest uh, uh, pow uh, power. Uh, it's so. Uh, and it has a higher data throughput. Uh, on the server area, uh, the V series and the N series is, uh, uh, are commonly used. So, uh, besides the CPU cores, uh, ARM also provides uh, uh, some uh, system IPs uh, uh, and the subsystems. Uh, the name is the CSS computing subsystems uh, for customers to build a flexible. Uh, system uh, by themselves, and it includes some other ARM IP such like the CMN. Uh, it is a mesh-based uh, coherent interconnection block, and uh, it supports a large scale of CPU cores, uh, from dozens of CPUs to uh, 100, one, uh, more than 100 CPU. Uh, and the gig is the interrupt controller to manage the uh, interrupt. And the MMU and SMMU for the memory address translation. One is for the CPU side, another is for the device side. Okay. Okay. Next, uh, let's take a look at how networking data flow goes through these ARM IPs uh, in the SR SRIOV solutions. Uh, when the uh, guest driver informs the device about the uh, destination uh, memory address where the data should be uh, transported. Uh, the device can use its uh, DMA master to transport the data to the server's main memory. Uh, in this case, uh, the driver and the device need to be in the same address view to ensure the correctness of the data transport. So, uh, the SMMU and the MMU play the role in the uh, address translation. Um, and besides the MMU and SMMU, there's a core uh, block uh, CMN uh, in this diagram. Uh, it, uh, it, uh, the CMN interconnection blocks connects the different hardware components, uh, including the CPU cores, the memory, and the I/O bus uh, connect with uh, external device such like the NIC. Uh, all data in interaction need to pass through it. Um, and there's another flow uh, is used to notify the guest that there are network packets arrived. Uh, this flow is uh, mostly controlled by the GIG uh, block. Uh, and the ITS under the GIG block uh, is a part of the GIG. It is responsible to translate the MSI, the message based interrupt, uh, to the uh, CPU interface ID. Okay, uh, let's start from the uh, notification flow. Uh, this diagram shows uh, the, the major component in the gig. Uh, the ITS module uh, translates the MSI into the inter interrupt ID and the uh, distributor and the redistributor block routing the disinterrupt and forward it to a specific CPU core. And on the CPU core side, uh, there are a CPU interface, interface for each core. Uh, they focus on the interrupt handling. There are two kinds of interrupt uh, interface. Uh, physical interrupt needs to be processed by the host uh, or the hypervisor such like KVM to handle the physical IRQ. 
and the virtual interrupt is processed by the guest VM uh, to, um, to handle the virtual interrupt. Yeah. So uh, the gig has different version. Uh, in the gig v4, or in the gig v3, uh, when uh, an external IRQ is received, uh, it will be forwarded to a, a special call. Uh, but this is a physical uh, interrupt. It will be forwarded to a specific call uh, by the array distributor. Uh, in, uh, here, the CPU need to chop to ER2, the exception level 2, uh, which is a higher uh, privilege and where the hypervisor wrong. Uh, when the CPU chop to the ER2, the hypervisor, the KVM, can handle the physical IRQ in the ER2. And then, hypervisor uh, need to set the list register to trigger a virtual I actually to virtual CPU interface. And then the guest OS can handle it in ER1 to make the following process. So uh, the guest OS is running, when the, if the get, guest OS is running and then external physical IRQ is coming, the guest OS need to exit to hypervisor for the physical interrupt handling. There is a significant overhead to, uh, uh, to make the VM exit because there are some VM context need to be uh, stored and recovered. Uh, to reduce such overhead, uh, the GIG v4 introduce a feature uh, to directly inject a virtual IRQ into the guest without VM exit. Uh, in this case, the hypervisor uh, uh, need to es establish the device ID event, event ID pair to the virtual interrupt mapping uh, by uh, issue a command to the ITS module. Uh, after that, the ITS can translate, uh, can look up the translate table and directly uh, translate the MSI to the uh, virtual interrupt uh, without any uh, trapping to the ER2 on the CPU side. So it's much helpful for, for the uh, uh, notification performance uh, and the impact the uh, virtual networking performance. Okay, so let's go back to the transport data flow. <coughs> uh, in, in this diagram, uh, we have, we have uh, reduced the CMN is the key point uh, about the uh, high performance data transport. Uh, but the SMMU is also essential in this case. Uh, the reason is uh, when the driver, uh, the network driver in the gas uh, to uh, uh, to notify the uh, hardware to uh, deliver some packet into their memory. Uh, they need to have the same uh, memory address view. Uh, <coughs> so the SMME block uh, here is configurable to translate the memory address for device. It provides uh, the external device the same view memory as the virtual machine. Uh, the SMMU is conceptually a copy of the MMU inside the CPU cores. It can be placed in your system between the device and the interconnection block. Uh, any transaction passing through uh, the SSMU can then be translated. Uh, there's an example about the SSMU implementation. Uh, in the nervous subsystem, a uh, computing subsystem, uh, there's an important IP, MMU 700. Uh, it is, in, uh, it, it implements the SMMU V3. It is composed of the uh, three uh, major components. The TBU, uh, translation buffer unit, uh, contains uh, uh, local side buffers, TRB. Uh, it can cache the translation tables and help the uh, address translation uh, uh, performance, uh, just like the TRB in the MMU. Uh, and the TCU, the translation control unit, uh, control and manage the address translation when the TRB miss happen. Uh, TCU need to look at the translation table. Uh, it impact the uh, uh, on the networking performance uh, from the device side to the uh, guest side. 
uh, and the DTI interconnection, uh, uh, it connection to multiple DPUs. So when uh, MMU 700 instance can uh, have several uh, TVU and uh, uh, only one TCU, uh, various TVU can connect the different uh, uh, masters. Some masters from the PCIe and some masters uh, from the other buses. So they will need the uh, interconnection module to connect them. Yes, that's uh, all about the hardware uh, implementation for the virtual network on our server. So let's uh, have it. Okay, that's all about our presentation. I will give a very brief summary of this presentation. So firstly, we introducing three virtual networking solutions available for data centers from software side. And then we introduce a um, newer CPU offer high performance core for serv servers. And uh, um, newer computing subsystem provide a range of system IPs to accelerate performance. Also, how we introduce how v 4 and SMMU version 3 enhance virtual networking capabilities. And uh, here is the contact information uh, about me, Hao <coughs> Wei Zhang, and uh, my colleague Wei Yanqing. We are working, folks, we are working on the mm, network performance for virtual machine or so governmental server will also make contribution to some uh, cloud native project or some other performance, uh, user space performance tooling. So if you have any question, welcome send the EF email to us. Yes. Okay, that's all. Thank you.